What's up guys, it's Michael from iAppliteTech.com and today I have the review of the iPod Nano 7th generation. Now I apologize for this review being so late but let's just get straight to it. So let's first start off with the dimension of the iPod Nano as well as the hardware surrounding it. The iPod Nano has a 2.5 inch multi-touch screen and it comes in at 240 by 432 pixels at 202 pixels per inch. So the display is pretty good. It's not retina display or anything, but it's still pretty good. It has a height of 3.01 inches, a width of 1.56 inches. It's 0.21 inches thin and it only weighs 1.1 ounces. And also, as you can see, new to the iPod Nano is actually a home button. This is something we've never seen on the Nano line. We've only seen a home button on the iPod and Touch, the iPhone, and the iPad. But we'll talk more about the home button later. On the side of the iPod Touch, you'll be able to see a volume up and a volume down. And in between the volume up and volume down buttons, you'll be able to see a play slash pause button. Taking a look at the bottom of the iPod Nano, we can see a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, as well as a lightning connector to charge and sync your iPod Nano. Flipping over to the top of the iPod Nano, we can just see your on slash off uh, sleep wake button. Now comparing the seventh generation Nano to the old sixth generation Nano, you can definitely see there is a difference. Uh, not only just in size, but actually with the actual kind of the operating system too, I guess you could say. So when we turn on the uh, sixth generation iPod Nano, you can see we have these very small squares on a very small screen. Uh, you can move back and forth and choose what you want, but on the new 7th generation iPod Nano, we have a much larger display and we also have these circular icons, which actually this is the first time I've seen like circular icons to tap on uh, with the iPad, the iPhone, the iPod Touch, they're all square uh, like this, but with the iPod Nano 7th generation, they're actually circular and you have much more room on the screen. I think this is a really nice thing. I like having a little bit of a bigger screen compared to the 6th generation iPod Nano. I think the 7th the, the generation iPod iPod Nano is something you're going to want to go with if you want a bigger screen. And of course, gone from the 6th generation iPod Nano is the 30-pin connector. With the 7th generation iPod Nano, like I said before, we now have that new uh, uh, lightning pin connector, which is much smaller. Now, neither of these iPod Nanos have Wi-Fi, so if you do want to do some syncing, you're going to have to do it using your iTunes. There's no iCloud or anything with this. There's no internet browsing, no app store. Uh, this is strictly just no Wi-Fi everything you get is on the device already you can't download apps you can't search the internet uh, if you want to do that you're gonna have to buy an iphone ipod touch or an ipad now for those of you sitting at home just trying to compare to see how big actually these ipod nanos are uh, here's a quarter so you can see we have the old generation ipod nano here and the new nano here so about as big as a quarter the old ipod nano is actually quite small as you can see right there and the new ipod nano is actually quite a bit bigger if you ask me. So once you get your seventh generation iPod Nano, this is what you'll get. Uh, you'll get your music, podcasts, photos, clock, your settings, your radio, your videos, and your fitness. And I believe if you plug in uh, some headphones, you also get voice memos too. So let's talk a little bit more about this home button. It's actually a fairly small little home button, but I actually uh, I actually like this home button. Besides what other reviewers have been saying, I've watched some other reviews of the iPod Nano. I actually really like it. I think it's a lot easier to press an actual button as opposed to you know trying to pinch in or swipe out or something like that. I like actually being able to, when I'm in an app, just be able to touch a button and go straight back to the home page. I think the home button uh, is a definitely a welcome addition for me at least. Let's go ahead and go into music and I'll show you guys how these uh, volume buttons work. Let's just go into a random song here. Uh, don't judge me because of my music. It's just what I listen to. Uh, here's the down button. As you can see, just goes down. And actually, uh, what I've noticed with the iPod Nano is that uh, it actually goes down quite slow when you hold it down. So there's a lot of different uh, volume options, I guess you could say. So you go up a little bit. You can press it a whole bunch of times before you actually get up to the uh, to the top uh, level, I guess you could say. It's also that play slash pause button, so you can click it and it'll stop. Click it again and it'll start. It's actually a really nice thing when you're using it in the car or just when you're using it in general. You just don't want to have to open and unlock the iPod Nano every time. Um, play slash pause. We can just hit that button right there and I'll do it for you. Now viewing photos and watching videos on this iPod Nano isn't like the best thing in the world, but I mean it's there. Uh, if you're going to buy something to watch videos and view photos on, I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting the iPod Nano. I'd want to get something else. Uh, but if you do get the iPod Nano, you can watch a video on it. You can view pictures on it, but I do not recommend it. It is nice to have a clock app. I mean, you can see the different times of the world. Uh, you can't really use this as an actual watch like you could with the, the old iPod Nano. You could just strap it to your wrist with a, an accessory and you could use it as a watch. Uh, but what I do like this to use it for is a timer. If you uh, were watching uh, some of my videos about the new iPhone or maybe the iPad mini, I was actually using this as a timer. And of course, you also have a timer here again, but this one's a countdown timer. This one you can actually you know, see how long stuff lasts for. 
It does have Nike Plus, so if you do some running on here, uh, this is going to be something you'll like too. You can track all your workout progress and upload it to your computer uh, just using this Nike Plus app. Now one thing gone from the 6th uh, generation iPod Nano is actually this clip right here. So if you are a runner and you do use this thing to work out, uh, you might miss this. This is an actual clip right here. You can just clip it onto your clothes, go on the treadmill, go running with it. As you can see here, uh, the iPod Nano 7th generation does not have one of those. However, it's really not too big a deal just to stick this in your pocket. I haven't really noticed it to be uh, that big a difference. It was kind of nice to have that clip on there, but as you can see, it definitely it does get rid of a lot of, a lot of thickness. So let's go ahead and hold these both up. You can see it definitely is much thinner, uh, uh, not adding that clip there. What I wish Apple would do is start giving users the option. If they want a clip, have an option where you could add a clip on. If you don't want a clip, have an option where you don't need to add the clip on. Uh, they need to have more options for people and just customize it to their liking. Apple also included these new things called the Apple Ear Pods. Now what these are is basically Apple's new redesigned headphones. Uh, they do feel a little bit better. They do sit a little bit better in your ears. Uh, and they do sound a little bit better, but they're not something I would go out and buy uh, for free. They come free with the iPod Nano. I would definitely recommend them, using them at least. But um, if you want to get some better headphones, I'd recommend it. But these do come free uh, when you purchase your iPod Nano 7th generation. One thing it does not include, though, is no inline controls. There's no microphone on here. There's no volume up and down, which kind of doesn't make sense to me. But you do have your volume up and down, your play slash pause on the side of the iPod Nano itself. But it's still just kind of cheap of Apple to throw in there. Uh, if you do want to use the radio app, you will have to connect headphones. It'll actually work as the signal. So if we go into the radio now, it'll be able to use it and connect it. And we're just getting a bunch of static right now. But if I unplug this, the radio app is actually not going to work. So I go into it and you can see it telling me to please plug in my headphones. Go out of it again. We'll go into it again. It'll tell me again. Plug in headphones to use radio reception. So overall, I think what the iPod Nano is for is for people who want to listen to music, listen to the radio, and listen to podcasts. If you want to view photos and pictures and videos, this is not what you're going to want to buy. You're going to want to get something like an iPod Touch or an iPad Mini with that. If you want to just listen to some podcasts, listen to some music, go on the radio, do stuff like that, maybe have an occasional timer, something to track your running with Nike Plus, this is a great thing to buy. Although it would be nice to see a clip on it or at least an option for a clip uh, for people who run and work out. Apple hasn't done that, but it's really not too big a deal to just stick this in your pocket and you're pretty much good to go. So if you want something to listen to music with, listen to the radio occasionally and maybe listen to some podcasts, definitely go with the iPod Nano 7th generation. Amazing design, amazing build quality, and overall I really liked it. Oh, as it's going to do it of my review of the iPod Nano, I apologize again for being so late. If you guys are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. I put out new tech videos every single week, and I'll see you guys in my next video.